How's it going everyone? The one MFP here. I hope you're all doing great today. I'm back with a new Who Watch Any reaction and it has been a while since I've uttered those words. Matter of fact, prior to about a week and a half ago, it had been a while since I filmed a reaction video to anything at all. But yeah, about a week and a half ago, I started uh, filming again. I posted a few reactions and one of the requests I got was for a new Who Watch Any reaction and I've got to say, I'm excited to do so here today. I'm excited to film a new Hua Chen Yu reaction. During my absence, I still listen to some of his music, but exclusively songs I had already reacted to, so as to avoid uh, limiting myself in terms of what I could react to in the future. So I know like one of the songs I listened to a lot during my YouTube absence was uh, Madhouse. I'll say that one of the things I truly miss about reacting to a Hua Chen Yu video is for one just sharing the experience of experiencing a Hua Chen Yu song or performance or music video for the first time but also appreciating the different elements of his artistry because I'll say as much as I've listened to Madhouse in the past couple of years um, I couldn't fully appreciate the song to the fullest extent because what I was really appreciating were the sonic elements of it I don't speak Chinese, so I couldn't really relate to the lyrics, and I know there's a lot of depth to the lyrics, and it leads to introspection, because you, you listen to these songs as you uh, follow along with the lyrics, and in my case, I follow along with the English translations, and, you know, y you experience it as you're listening to the song and as you read through the lyrics, but then you walk away from the song, and, and you're just left to think about what was said and there really is a beauty to that it's art in its finest form in my opinion that's what i look for when i look to art it's truly an experience for me and it's one that i've missed so i'm looking forward to having that here today and the song i'm going to be reacting to is a more recent song it's off of his fifth album uh, the song's entitled illusion and reality with a title like that you could already safely assume that there's going to be that uh you know that lyrical depth that i was just referring to there's going to be that moment of introspection i'm looking forward to seeing what happens there lyrically so yeah without further ado let's jump right into this reaction watch and you illusion and reality mars concert 2023 let's go I love this contrast already. Oh my goodness. 
Chills. That was incredibly beautiful and I've said it time and time again, he just never ceases to disappoint. Just that stage presence he brings with every single performance, it, it draws you in and I'm left to observe every single movement he does and I get caught up in that aspect of the performance so much. I almost feel like it'll take me a few listens and watches to really appreciate the, the performance to the fullest extent, but even with what I had the ability to appreciate here, um, I was just completely blown away by, and that, that seems to be a pattern with anything I react to of Hua Chen Yu's. He's just this incredible performer that is so versatile. He just seems to have the ability to switch things up so much while being seamless between the switch ups, and he just nails everything so convincingly. One thing I could say right away after watching this is I really liked the type of feeling you get from the fact that there's a switch up in the song in terms of like the instrumentals, but he just stays consistent within that in his stage presence. He doesn't really, you know, you go into a more harder rock type sound, but he stays calm throughout it all. The same way he stayed calm in the calmer, more, um, I guess, softer section of the song, he carries that over into the heavier portion and then he brings it back to the, the softer portion and it, his attitude, his demeanor is just consistent through it all, except he sings maybe a little bit louder with like the opera sounding section. So perhaps it kind of conveys this message of him needing to, to scream or shout a little louder to get his message across when surrounded by noise. I'll have to pull up the lyrics and read into those a little more just to get a better feel for that aspect of it, but I just really like the type of visual that presented us with and the type of emotion it filled me with. And that's something I truly appreciate about any of the Hua Chen Yu performances I've watched. It just feels like it conveys emotion that makes it so that you don't actually require knowledge of what he's saying specifically. The lyrics add so much to the performance, but even without them, these performances lead you to feeling something. And I know I've said it before, I think I've even said it in this video already, that's exactly what I look for in art. That's like, I want to feel something. And for me to not even have to be able to speak the language that he's speaking and yet still feel something, that speaks a lot to what he's capable of with this music and with his performances. But yeah, I think at this point I've reacted to and listened to a little over 10 Hua Chen Yu songs. And this one ranks up there with my favorites. Like this is probably top three favorite for me. I absolutely love this. Um, there's like this certain simplicity to it at first that draws you in and really gets you wondering what's going to happen. You're, you're really curious to know what he's talking about as well. So I will say as much as he leads you to feel something with what he's doing in this performance. You're really curious to know what he's saying specifically, but then that switch up comes and completely blows you away and then you're completely lost in the sound of it. So yeah, there's just so much going on here that made me fall in love with this song. So I'm curious to know what he was talking about specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the lyrics now to maybe get a little more insight into what the subject matter was. And in that respect, I'd like to thank Hua Chen Yu English subs for providing the translations for the lyrics to these songs. Um, it allows me to dive into the lyrical content a little bit and get a better understanding of what's going on in the song. And it definitely contributes to what I can do with these reactions. It allows me to go into a bit of an analysis portion of this video. So thank you to them. And now let's jump right into these lyrics. So the opening lyrics of this song 
are, as a naive child who hates the ebbs and flows of tides, I pray for the moon to disappear, tossing and turning incessantly till I'm weightless, the mattress crumbles into a black hole, look at the endless space, how charming it is. I was talking about how introspective you can get listening and reading into lyrics that Hua Chen Yu sings. This is the perfect example of that. We're going into a metaphor that uh, we know he's going to flesh out really well as the song progresses. What we have so far is a person that seems to be struggling to sleep, uh, somebody who's struggling to fall asleep and is stuck with their thoughts. And I think this is a topic that we aborted in my last, in the song I last reacted to, which was um, a Madhouse. It does feel like it's a similar metaphor we're going for here, at least initially. But I really like the wording here. Look at the endless space, how charming it is. It's almost like as excruciating as it can be, and it is indeed excruciating because he's saying he prays for the moon to disappear. He can't wait for this night to be over and for him to, you know, wake up in a new day and experience new things and have new thoughts. But just the fact that he's stuck in this moment and he's sinking into his bed and into his thoughts um, there is a certain appreciation for this process itself and what it provides him with. Using terms like black hole and endless space makes it feel like it's this infinite thing he's stuck in, this infinite loop that um, he knows is just going to be a struggle for him. But how charming it is. It feels like there's something about that that he actually appreciates. So we don't have enough context just yet to know what exactly it is that he appreciates about this. But let's get into the next part. In a space-time of self-disguise, exposing oneself is more respectful, yet the world continues undisturbed. Putting on cakey makeup is ingrained. There may be more than one person who is so noble that they use abject disguises, then they easily accept the crowd salvation fantasies. So we're already getting more insight here. We're talking about disguises. We're talking about how that notion of, of putting on a mask and a disguise and portraying something that you may not be internally is actually of value to you. And he even uses a bit of sarcasm in there saying there's people that are so noble to use these disguises and, and pretend that this is the real them. And then you have these crowds of people who truly believe that this is the real person and they see that as like this hope for themselves. But you go back to the earlier lines of this specific section. He's saying exposing oneself is more respectful. Uh, in a world of self-disguises. He does truly believe that showing the real you and allowing yourself to be vulnerable in that way is the more noble thing to do. To build your life off of fantasies and false hope is a great way to build your life on a shaky foundation that is inevitably going to crumble at some point. And when that facade does inevitably fall apart, who do you become? What do you make of yourself because you've been pretending to be something you're not for the longest time. It's so easy to lose yourself that way. So you go back to that initial part I was talking about and perhaps what he truly appreciates about uh, this black hole and endless space is that he knows this struggle is allowing him to find himself. He knows what he's involving himself in and he knows what he's trying to get out of it. And he knows he's not going to take a shortcut and preserve elements of himself by blocking it out from reality altogether and by masking it with these disguises that portray something entirely different from what is real to him. But in addition to the way I interpret those lines, I also am brought back to the way I interpreted lyrics in Madhouse. There, it felt to me like he was speaking to the difficulties he had integrating himself to, into society when he felt like... Um, you know, he had these struggles that he was going through and he knows that other people are going through their own struggles and they have their own difficulties. But he also felt like people put on these disguises and in everyday life, they kind of hid away what those struggles were. And in order to portray what they felt they needed to portray in order to be accepted, they subscribed to various popular beliefs. And then you kind of end up with this echo chamber that decides what is right and wrong. And anybody who doesn't really fit into what that popular belief decides is right ends up being ostracized in a way and sometimes vilified. So bringing that notion into this song, it does feel to me like part of that struggle he's experiencing at nighttime with the thoughts he's having 
is him trying to understand who and what he is. What does he believe in? Why does he believe what he believes? If you feel like everything you see around you is a disguise, um, how do you go about understanding what is real and differentiating it from what is not and understanding why people are portraying what they're portraying specifically? And then on top of that, you kind of have to figure out why you see it the way you see it. So like you kind of just end up trying to figure out what these different layers are and making sense of it all. So that could be why it feels endless. But um, that's what I make of it so far. Let's dive into the next part. Growing wildly in a gorgeous dreamland, yet in times of sleeplessness, it only leaves an empty hole in my chest. Dreams will wilt, because the night will eventually end. After waking up, I indulge in the decay. Every day, a side of me vanishes, reminding me of those purifications, those few greetings, and that tenderness that were not pretended. So I think those lines about growing wildly in a dreamland relate to the lines that preceded it directly. So in other words, that's those lines that uh, talk about people using abject disguises and then accepting the crowd's salvation fantasies. It seems to me that the author of these lines feels like um, this disguise does allow these people to experience growth and on top of that it allows them to be a symbol of hope for other people that'll then grow because of them being a symbol of hope. And in addition to that, I do feel like the term wildly being associated to growing here, uh, it, it does feel like it, it's a little bit uncontrolled and perhaps even unsustainable. And that level of growth may lead to a beautiful landscape with a beautiful environment. But what, again, what is it founded upon? And that's what leaves Hua Chen Yu and the author of these lines um, w with a hole in their heart. Here we have more of an explicit mention to the fact that this is what keeps him up at night. This is what he's thinking about when he's sleepless and restless. It's this idea that what he perceives to be beautiful around him is not all that beautiful because it's not real. And then we have this beautiful metaphor, dreams will wilt because the night will eventually end. We've been using the nighttime to refer to this struggle he's having while falling asleep, these thoughts he's struggling with. But now he's also using the night to describe this uh, landscape that these people have created with their disguises. It's a dreamland. And the dream will eventually fall apart because the night will end and then they will be brought back to reality. I just feel like that's a beautiful metaphor for all that they've built up to with the lines about disguises. But then also a nice line to kind of bring an intersection between what he's been experiencing himself and what he feels the world will experience, the people that he's referring to specifically, the people who, um, the people who indulge in disguises. One way or another, they're met with the same fate of having to experience and face reality. And then after that, we enter the heavier rock section of the song, and that's where we get these lines. Look here, the flowers are blooming. The greenery will never wilt. I might as well give you a few flowers to cover up the ugliness. Never has there been a wild land which is comparable to this paradise where any muddy and frightened beast could ever exist. So the fact that this section starts with look here, it is very important to establish what he's asking anyone to look at and to understand that at least from my perspective it's important to look into what he said just before after waking up i indulge in the decay every day a side of me vanishes there he was referring to the things that were real because he was talking about when the dreams fell apart and when people were forced to experience reality in those moments he sees decay but he also sees the opportunity for growth because you're, you're reminded of the things that are real. And any time an illusion falls apart and you're met with reality, a side of you vanishes because the side of you that was tied to the illusion no longer is relevant. So in this case, somebody who's not trying to indulge in uh, disguises, somebody who's trying to leave them behind altogether and not participate in that world and, and involve himself in that dreamland, a person like that benefits from the dreamland falling apart and... and is provided with more insight and more clarity. So when he says, look here, the flowers are blooming, the greenery will never wilt, to me it seems like he's seeing the positive in the situation and he's trying to provide other people with that perspective as well. I might as well give you a few flowers to cover up the ugliness. Never has there been a wild land which is comparable to this paradise 
where any muddy and frightened beast could ever exist. I hear that as here's my perspective on why this is better than your dreamland. I might as well take this perspective, give it to you and allow you to use that to cover up whatever it is that you think is so ugly about this place. There is beauty in difference. There is beauty in imperfection. We need to learn how to appreciate that. Once we come to appreciate that more than we fear it, we allow ourselves to be more open to just how expansive this landscape is and how beautiful it can be. At that point, we can come to appreciate reality more than illusion because there's more beauty to it. There's more intricacies to it. There's more than we could possibly conceive in our mind. If we force everyone into a specific box of perspective, there is so much less room for individuality and so much less room for people to express themselves and so much less rooms for us to come to understand people because there is so much less perspective on who and what they are and what they represent and what they come from. And an illusion is really limiting us to what we can perceive. So if we're going outside of an illusion and stepping into reality, it is understandable how it can be scary because it's going into the unknown. It's going into things that we can't really understand and we can't really perceive at least at a, at a surface level. It definitely takes some exploration to really allow ourselves to intake the information that's being presented to us. But going back to the opening lines of this song, he's talking about this idea of endlessness and a black hole. He is perceiving this reality as something that is endless and something that has a lot of unknowns, but that is not scaring him because he knows he's getting closer in touch with what is real as opposed to indulging in what people want to believe in order to preserve an illusion. So at this stage, we could definitely see why he's seeing the beauty and the decay as opposed to being frightened by it. How many people were born with pure goodness and hearts that were never stained by darkness, then they can become radiant and genuine singers. Even if nobody can clearly see that splendid stamen, yet they shall still loudly sing praises to that bright red rose. So what definitely caught my attention about those lines uh, with respect to the performance is Hua Chen Yu is wearing a red rose on his shoulder during that performance and we end on that line there, bright red rose. Then you go into the content of that section itself and he's saying how many people are born with pure goodness and darkness will never really get to them. This will allow them to turn into good people and, and speak and present themselves with purity. But as long as they catch a glimpse of something that they perceive to be beautiful, they're going to be influenced by it. So as long as that facade exists, as long as the illusion exists somewhere, despite everyone's best intentions, it is possible to be influenced by the illusion and to then perpetuate the illusion through their own actions, despite not having any ill intentions. And him wearing that red rose in the performance makes me feel like he's the person he's talking about in this instance. He feels like he is influenced by the illusions, and maybe that's why they bother him so much, right? So much that he's talking about them in this type of way. And perhaps there's a sense of guilt there. Perhaps there's a worry that uh, he's not fully sure of what he's portraying when he does this. Perhaps he's scared of how it may change his reality and how he may be becoming more superficial by adopting those things. And then in the song, we exit the heavier, more rock type section and we go back to something softer, something that feels like what we started with. The dream has not wilted, even if the night will end. Once awake, enjoy everything wholeheartedly. That guard was let down at some point in time, yet those purifications, those few greetings, and that tenderness still remained which redeemed a certain side of me. So definitely the two things that stood out to me there is the dream has not wilted, whereas the last time we had that softer section, he said the dream will wilt. Given the content we got in the heavier section of the song and how he approached it, um, you know, where he, he was talking about all the beautiful things that came with reality. It feels to me like the return to the softer section of the song and him saying that the dreams will not wilt despite the night ending. Uh, it feels to me like he's come to the realization that despite an illusion falling apart, there are too many barriers to get to reality. For that reason, what people call the dreamland, it will never fully fall apart. Once awake, enjoy everything wholeheartedly. I hear that as once you are uh, able to perceive reality, once you are actually getting a glimpse of that, enjoy it and take it in and appreciate it for what it is because it can really offer you something that will help you get through illusions at a later time too. 
that guard was let down at some point in time. In this song, it seems that his guard was let down when he saw other people struggling, when they were faced with reality, when the, the illusion came crashing down. In those moments, he was enticed to help people and perhaps help them perceive what he was perceiving in reality. And in taking on that role, he consequently became the crowd's salvation. He became that person he was talking about earlier who wore disguises. He had no intention of putting on a disguise or portraying that, but at the end of the day, his perception is his perception and he could try and offer that to somebody else, but they're going to perceive what they perceive of his perception. <laughs> it's a little bit confusing to say, but he can't really give them his point of view. They're going to make of it what they can relate to and make it their own and that's what's going to spread and that's what's going to become an illusion at some point in time. Our realities never fully overlap. We have our own experiences that lead us to believe the things we believe in. And when faced with difficult situations, there is this tendency to gravitate towards solutions that get us out of the difficult situation as quickly as possible. So if you offer help to someone, it's very difficult to make sure that that help is used in the exact way that you intended it to be used and on top of that you can only really provide a certain scope of your perspective it's really difficult to go into the nitty-gritty of everything that led to the perspective so basically my understanding of these lines is it is really easy to contribute to an illusion and then we have the other part of this section that definitely struck me it had a certain significance to it because of its repetition uh, yet those purifications, those few greetings, and that tenderness still remained which redeemed a certain side of me. Earlier, he was talking about uh, parts of him vanishing when he was met with those moments of clarity. There are multiple ways I read into that. Um, the earlier line I kind of thought to be him saying that every time he is presented with reality, he's able to kind of filter out parts of him that are founded on illusion. And here at the end with him saying a part of him is redeemed by the same things, it does feel like a part of him is understanding that illusion is not all we make it out to be. Illusion is kind of a necessary byproduct of us coexisting. On the other hand, with him saying something like redeemed at the end, it does feel like there's a certain sense of resolution here where um, he's bringing back parts of him that he thought was bad. He could be led to believe that he is a bad person for contributing to illusions, but understanding why he did and said the things he did allows him to understand that he was not, he didn't have bad intentions in doing what he did and said. So he will not allow himself to become bitter for helping support an illusion. And yeah, that pretty much summarizes what I made of this song and this performance. Once again, we have Hua Chen Yu singing lyrics that leave you with a lot of thoughts to lead you to, uh, I would say, a lot of introspection. We have a lot of talk about what is real and what is fake, what people portray versus what they truly feel inside. Earlier in the song, he's pretty critical about what he perceives to be disguises, and he also seems to be blaming people who partake in that to be contributing to the propagation of false hope. He feels like people are led to believe in something that is not truly real and thus they are contributing to a dream that will inevitably fall apart. But then in situating himself in the harsh world and the harsh reality that the world would face in such situations, he sees in himself the type of person that would go out of his way to help other people, help uplift other people and provide them with hope. And in that moment, he seems to realize that he's also providing people with hope that could realistically be used to build something that isn't necessarily real. He could be providing people with insight that they don't actually perceive the way he perceives. And at that point, it could be perceived that he's also wearing a disguise and providing people with false hope. So despite his best intentions, he may be contributing to what he's condemning. The truth and reality will always be impeded and hidden by illusion because illusion is basically defined by the limits of our ability to perceive. What can allow us to extend beyond our perspective is kindness and understanding and a willingness to have a certain open-mindedness. If we could do that, we could successfully peel away at layers of illusion as we are provided with new information. That information allows us to get that much closer to reality and the truth. And for that reason, Hua Chen Yu in this song decides to be kind to himself. Illusion and reality are simply interwoven in ways that are too difficult to 
kind of take apart if you're trying to look at the landscape of the world as a whole. But getting closer to truth and reality starts with how you treat yourself and how you perceive the things you do. And as we go back to the beginning of the song, that's an endless struggle in of itself. You know, truly understanding why you do the things you do and why you think the things you think. But it is very important to not ignore those things and to truly try and understand. Because if you do ignore, then you are more likely to fall in line with an illusion and just adhere to that and then contribute to the propagation of said illusion. And yeah, that pretty much summarizes my interpretation of the song. Definitely a song I loved a lot, a performance I'll be watching many more times. Let me know what you thought of the song, let me know what you thought of the performance, or let me know what you thought of my reaction. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time. Have a great day, y'all.